This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now we're going to look at what happens in the cash flow statement if you buy or sell a subsidiary in the year. And there are two points that we have to sort out here. So in the notes, the first paragraph, which is the most important one, is about dealing with the purchase and sale of subsidiary itself. I'm going to call that rule one. The second rule is about the impact of the subsidiary on the balances in the consolidated accounts. I'll call that rule two. We'll sort out rule one first. That's the most important. If you're looking at the words, you can see up there that it says, for example, that the acquisition of a subsidiary, again, is a net cash outflow. And it also implies that the disposal of a subsidiary is again a net cash inflow. So we need to understand exactly what we mean by those. When you buy a subsidiary, two things change. First of all, you spend some money, and that is a big outflow of cash. Secondly, when you go to collect your subsidiary and rush home to see what you've bought, you find that alongside the other assets like PPE, receivables and so on, you've also bought some cash because you're buying all of the net assets again of the subsidiary company. So I'll show you how that works and show you a working that you can use when you buy or sell a subsidiary. So we're going to sort that out. If you want, pause the recording while you have a read of example three, and then I'll start to talk you around the numbers that are there. In example three, you can see, first of all, the total consolidated figures for this particular group. So all of the information, again, is about the group as a whole. So this information at the top here is about the group. At the start of the year, the group will not own the subsidiary, and at the end of the year, it will. Then we're told some information about the new subsidiary. So if you're looking here, all of this information is about the new subsidiary. We're told, first of all, how much we paid for the subsidiary. And then we're told about the net assets and liabilities that were acquired. Those assets and liabilities would not be in the opening group account figures, but they would be in the closing group account figures. First thing we have to do is to record the purchase of the subsidiary. And remember in the cash flow, all we're interested in are movements in cash. So I can see that when I bought the subsidiary, I had to pay the person who was selling the subsidiary, 50 million. They are now a very rich person and they've probably gone to live on the beach. So I've paid them $50 million. In return, I've got all of these assets and liabilities. One of the things I've picked up though is the subsidiary's bank balance. The subsidiary has brought a bank balance of five. So from a cash flow perspective, the bad news is I've paid out 50. 
The good news is I've received five. So when we do the working for that, so again, so this is really just thinking about step one. If I'm dealing now with the acquisition of the subsidiary, in the cash flow statement, I will show an extra cash flow. It's an outflow and I will show it as investing activity along with inv other investing activities like purchase of VAM, PPE, purchase of intangible and so on. So in the investing activity, I will have purchase of the subsidiary and in a minute, I will have a big cash outflow. You could do the working in brackets. It's not very hard. All that's happened is that we have paid out cash of 50. That was paid to the person who sold us the subsidiary. So we've paid out 50. Bad news. The good news, though, is that we have received a cash balance of five. That's the cash balance acquired fifty minus five means you've got a net outflow of forty five. We don't actually have any subsidiaries being sold. If we did, the calculation is just the other way round. So we don't have one here, but if we did have one, I would have a line in investing activities with sale of subsidiary. It would be a positive cash inflow and it would be the difference, again, between the money that I receive from the purchaser. So it will be whatever money I receive, so received from the purchaser, But when I sell the subsidiary, I have to actually give all the assets away, including the cash balance. So there would be, presumably, a cash balance disposed of. So it works in exactly the same way, inflow or outflow, but remember, there are always two flows. The other impact on the cash flow statement, which I'm calling step two, is a little bit messier. And you can see here, they talk in the notes, or we talk in the notes, about an extra adjustment that we need to make. There it is, to adjust all of the balances. Imagine for a moment, at the start of the year, you had no inventory. And then the subsidiary brought with it inventory of five. And in inventory at the end of the year, you only had five. You didn't buy that inventory directly from someone outside. It arrived indirectly, indirectly, when we purchased the subsidiary. So when we reconcile the opening and closing balances, PPE, inventory, receivables, payables, taxation, and so on, we always have to say, were these cash flows or was it something that arose simply when I bought the subsidiary? In this example, looking here, I can see if I just look at the payables line, that the payables have increased again. The payables again have increased 
from 67 to 85. It sounds like an increase in payables of 18. But in fact, if you look at the note underneath, one reason for that is the payable again, which was brought into the accounts when I acquired the subsidiary. And you can see down here that again, that payable was three. So in fact, of the 18, the difference that there seems to be between the 67 and 85, three arose simply when I bought the subsidiary. So in order to sort that out, it would need a separate working. So we'd need to think about a sensible working to deal with that. Um, Think about the top part of the cash flow where we reconcile the profit before tax to the tax from, to the cash from operations. And you know that's where you normally put increase or decrease in inventory receivables and payables and so on. Let's have a look at that in this example. So I'm looking now as an extract from a different part of the cash flow statement. I'll call this, for now, step two. I'm looking at the part of the cash flow statement in operating activities. So here we are in the operating section. As always, you would start again with profit before tax and so on. And then you add back things like depreciation, so all the things you're used to doing. And then, as you know, you have those three lines to deal with the change in inventory, receivables and payables. So I'm just going to write those three lines down now. Change in inventory. change in receivables and change in payables. To get to the numbers, it's probably safest to do a working because otherwise I think we get into a muddle you can do the working in columns or rows, whichever you find easier. I use columns most of the time, but it really doesn't matter. What I'm going to do is to reconcile the brought down figures with the carried down figures for each of those three headings. Inventory, receivables and payables. I'm going to reconcile the figures in the soft P at the start of the year to the figures in the soft P at the end of the year. So I'm just going to do some copying first. I'm looking for the opening balances on those three amounts. They're in the right hand column of my cash flow statement of my um, draft balance sheet, I can see the opening figures, 195, 109, and 67. 195, 109, and 67. I'll do the same at the end of the year. End of the year, 145, 130 and 85. 145, 130 and 85. One reason why the balances have changed 
is because we bought the subsidiary. So now I'm writing in the figures for the subsidiary that was acquired in the year. So looking back at the example, the figures for the sub acquired in the year, I can see were eight, six, and three. Don't worry about the brackets. I would just say, just write everything as a positive number to avoid getting into a muddle. Eight, six, and three. So let's write those numbers in. Eight, six, and three. The figure that you need for your cash flow statement, again, is going to be your balancing figure. But you need to keep a clear head. So inventory started at 195, plus eight is 203. It finishes at 145. So that means, therefore, that inventory has actually decreased by 58. So inventory has gone down by 58. That's a decrease. Receivables, 109 plus 6 is 115. Receivables have gone up, haven't they? So there's an unexplained increase there of 15. That's an increase. And finally, payables have also increased. 67 and 3 is 70. Compared to 85, that's an increase again of 15. Now remember from when you did financial reporting before, you have to be careful about writing those numbers into your final answer. So an increase, I'm sorry, a decrease in inventory is good news for cash because you've not tied up your money in stock or inventory. So the change in inventory, which is actually an increase, we show in our cash flow statement as a positive number. It's good news, 58. The increase in receivables, management would say this is disgusting because the business has not been collecting the money from the customers. So that's bad for cash. Bad for cash means it goes in brackets. Think for a minute about the payables. Yes, an increase in payables is good for cash because we've kept the money. We've probably upset the payables. Never mind, we've still kept the money. So that would go in as a positive number. That would be again a positive 15 in the cash flow statement. So buying and selling a subsidiary is important. You would always be asked about it if part of your exam asks about cash flow statement. So first of all, rule one, the net cash outflow or inflow is an investing activity. Rule two, we have to adjust the other assets and liabilities for the assets and liabilities that were acquired with the subsidiary in the year.